welcome back everybody. Uh, this week we're going to be going over part three of our three part series with the analog way live core setup. And today we're going to be going over just basic tips and tricks. A couple little things that might help make your life easier when using this system. And the first thing I want to go over is this tiny little button right down here. Toggle unused layers and visibility. Let's turn that off, cleans everything up. Any layer I'm not using, I no longer see. If I do need to put something in a layer, I can highlight it. It shows up and I can drag something either to the box itself or where the layer is. So I just, again, if you're live mode running the show, you don't want all of that extra stuff anyway. The next thing is going to be show memory labels because I like to maximize as much space as I can get. So I'm going to bring this over a little too far to a little, and then all of my memories, more importantly, all of my master memories will be right here for me to view them. When you're dealing with multiple screens, I like to kind of just cheat this as much as I can. This will actually show the, resolution and formatting and all that jazz for all of that. So I don't want to make it too small because then like these buttons sit on top of each other and it gets kind of annoying. Like if you bring it too far, you can't really get to everything. So, and vertically you'll see all 12, so that's fine. But normally it'll tell you what resolution it's sitting at and it hurts and all that jazz. So since we're over here, I want to point out you can get to your freeze button and your basic settings for each of those inputs without actually leaving this tab. So if we wanna just look at the settings for satellite one, if we need to change any of this, do some keying, anything like that, we can get to it rather quickly that way. Again, we can just freeze it and the freeze icon does pop up. One side note, if you're using a multi-view, there will be a little identifiers that say if that particular input is live, um, if it's frozen, I believe, and stuff like that. But it's literally will say live and have a little a little light on it, or preview and have a little light on it. Frozen. I wish the whole box. Let's. I wish they would the way they did it is the whole box would change a color or something along those lines. I think that's a little bit easier because at this point you have to really hunt and look to see what's what's frozen or what's live and that type of thing. So we're going to unclick that. Um, you can also change, go ahead and change your plug. If you ran, if you plug things into the same input, but with different plugs, you can go ahead and change your plug real quick if you need to. So we're going to go through these buttons. We're going to go through real quickly, go through all of these. Um, so let's say I have my blend area preview selected and I want to, and layer A is selected. If I hit clear, I have to double click like always, it's going to clear just that out. Now, if I do that by accident, even though it's a double click, I can double click this and it restores it. If I want to clear that entire, this entire thing, double click clear, clears it all out. And because this is a, the reason these buttons are popping up is this is already a saved memory. So it's assuming that I'm changing the memory and I either need, want to save that long term, or maybe it was an accident and I can restore it. So the next two buttons, layer swap um, rise and layer swap lower, it's not gonna take this content, it's gonna take the layer that's selected. So you could either manually go down that way or you could just press the buttons over here. Some of these features are holdovers from previous versions, I believe, that they just kept in. So. The next two tabs I do use very, very frequently. It is our position, so we can change to a predetermined area and just move it all around. Normally, I, I'm normally using this to put it in the exact center. Restore that out. And then the size is six different preset sizes. So, and you can see what they are. And again, you're, it's, when you go to a different ratio, a different size, it'll keep the width and adjust the height. So, 
but I use those very frequently. Um, set layer size to its content size, which is basically if the content is a specific thing, it's going to fill that content as much as, as much as it can fill the screen. So for an example, if we do this, let's turn the, uh, the aspect ratio lock on the source is 16 by nine. And if we press this button, it's going to make 16 by nine. Notice it didn't put it in the middle, but it made it as big as it could be in that screen. You're going to see me double clicking a lot. Inversely, this makes that layer the entire output area. So let's do an experiment. This also centers, as you can tell. And then the last button is just sets it to sources ratio, which in this instance wouldn't be anything. Like for, for this instance over here, it just adjusts it again based on the width to its source, um, basic source ratio. Layout, there's a bunch of these layouts. You can tell it how many layers you're looking to use and it will give you all of the layouts based upon those layers. And some of them are kind of funky. Some of them sit on top of each other type thing. Um, if memory serves me, a setup like this one, let's tell you what's going to edit because make the screen a little bit bigger. So layout, six layers, something like that is actually intended for an LED wall to where it knows that you're going to, maybe they're, they're not all physically next to each other, but you're trying to make one big picture. But if you do want to just go through some of theirs and just to get ideas, you can go through that. I had forgotten about this a couple videos ago, but there is a copy button. I don't think there's a paste button, but whatever. More functions, and this goes back to something we did in pre-config with you want to do a fill or a fit for your layer croppings. Snap to grid, I don't use it as much. You can, again, if we go back to make this a little bit bigger, turn on snap to grid, and you can adjust. You can also use the drop down and tell it how big of a grid you want it and whether or not you want them shown. I typically don't use it because uh, I use the guide arrows, which is one of the next couple of buttons. So snap to other layers, I do use that. Because if you're doing a blend area, you won't run into this as much in an LED wall. But if you're doing a multi-projector blend, you're not always going to use all the way to these edges. So you need to figure out what actual center is by just sitting in front of the screen and staring at it. You probably need to do it with LED walls as well. I haven't used one of these with an LED wall. So... But you can't always just go off what their their setup for center is. Keep aspect ratio, and that'll be for no matter what layer you use, just as a whole. I'll unclick this when I'm going through and changing sizes. Toggle wire wireframe, just basically if you want the thumbnails there or not. Um, again, my favorite button is the last one, and some of this I don't these I don't use as much. Um, preset program reload. I don't use this. Um, I very specifically turn this off on like the pulse of the pulse twos and preset step back. These, I, again, I use these on the lower end ones where I am just touching the, the buttons on the front, not so much using a uh, graphic interface or anything else. Something else you can do if you, let's say, you need to change your, your, your downstairs monitors, or let's say both of these are actual downstairs monitors and you just need to change one. Uh, you can always just grab the new content you want to show them and drop it in and you're done. If you don't want to do it that way and you want to transition to it, you can unselect some of the screens, roll your T bar, it'll transition or just hit take and it'll roll a transition just on that. 
This is another thing that if you're not using an Elgato Stream Deck and you don't have buttons programmed for it, or you don't have a, a keyboard stroke program to take all screens, if you're just constantly hitting this button and you've unselected one of them, well, guess what? Now you're doing a transition, but your record didn't change. Why didn't your record change? Because you unselected it. So now you got to unselect, unselect, transfer that, select, select, you know, just it. Dealing with stuff like this, it's helpful, but you have to focus and remember to put it back the way you found it before you progress to something else. Otherwise, you're going to make mistakes. Trust me, I've been there. If for some reason you wanted your transition to be longer than a second or smaller than a second, right down here is where you adjust that. And I just click on it and I move it back and forth. And that's that. Basics, um, keep an eye out for this. If you lose sync to your controller, it'll let you know. It pops up this big window that says something went wrong. If you want to program in your own keystrokes, this is where you do it. We've covered this in a previous video. And if you want to take a picture, it literally takes this last button, literally just takes a picture of this. That's all it does. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Couple housekeeping things. I am working on a Facebook page, a Patreon page, and a Twitter just so I can keep you guys updated. Again, we did cross the um, 150 mark recently, or yes, 150 mark recently. Um, thank you guys for all of your support. Thank you guys for watching the videos. And as always, if there is anything that you want me to cover, if there's any questions you guys have, please leave comments. Please leave questions and I will do my best to put together a video to, well, to either simply answer the question or if it's something that I can't just write down in a couple sentences, I will make a video and help you out. I'm probably going to start doing some more black magic stuff. I want to do some more um, OBS tutorials and I might even venture into doing some vMix tutorials. But again, if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to hit me up and thanks for watching.